Neil Salazar Hadaway here with my co-host, with the mostest, well, actually second mostest, Mr. Nick Andrade, and you're the second mostest because we have a guest in studio today, Aaron Caboose Coos. He's the mostest. Yeah, that's fine. I'll, I'll take that. That's enough. Okay. I was trying to get a fight going here. No. Right? You guys were like, <laughs> well, that he, sounds about accurate. He came in hot when he came in here, we were, like <laughs> talking trash to me. Here. I'm like, what? <laughs> What the hell, man? We haven't even met in person. Hey, man. You know, it's just how it is sometimes. <laughs> well, I mean... I, I, especially as the the one with the mostest, according to... You yeah, are the mostest. The mostest in points in trivia, because last time you were here, we did some trivia. We did a competition. Like, let's just I say. didn't even know <laughs> half of the answers. He had the answers in front of him. How am I supposed to know what the first Spider-Man game ever was, 1984? Okay, I, got, I think I got that one wrong, too. Yeah. I'll point out, whenever I have a question of the day, I always prepare you... Right before being like, by the way, this is what the question of the day is going to be. But every time you do it, you're just like, oh, I had the question of the day, Nick, by the way. Mom and dad are fighting. Yeah, see? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. But that, <laughs> that is true. And that is true. We are we are fighting yeah. because it's serious business here on Autosave as we continue our deep dive through Spider-Man 2. And guys, yeah. we're going to do this one last time. This is our final Ooh, episode like of Spider-Man like 2. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. I know you've had it. You're I good know. at this. You know, yeah. I have, have some you done this before? I have some practice. <laughs> no, I, when I wrote that one into my script, I was like, oh, this is a good one. Juicy. Yeah. Juicy, yeah. juicy. But for those that you might have missed Caboose's episode when he was on the podcast, like, what are you doing? But Caboose, just remind everyone what you do. You do a lot with superheroes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I got a YouTube channel that mainly covers like superhero games. Spider-Man 2 being probably like the biggest of the ones I've ever covered. Um, but also like Mortal Kombat, a lot of like pop culture related things, but obviously like a huge focus is superhero gaming related things. And then, yeah, we were here talking like the first episode the for Spider-Man 2, yes. talking about the opening of the game. And here we are now at the very end. You know, it's crazy. We're here at the very end. Episode 12 of our Spider-Man saga. Usually we only do 10 episodes, but yeah. there was so much story in this one. It's a lot. There's a lot to cover, so we decided to do the extra, and now we are here at the end. So let's run down what happened last episode. I guess I should thank you. I spent years of my life consumed with vengeance. I lost everything for it. You two reminded me that that's not who I am. When you help someone, you help everyone. Where are you gonna go? To set things right. Your way. Wow. Reforming your greatest enemy. Can't say I've ever done that. Maybe MJ was right. Why would the city need me when it has you? <laughs> I don't know. This city still looks like a two Spider-Man job to me. Well, Martin Lee redeemed himself, not only by helping Miles, but also getting through to Peter because Peter was stuck under the symbiote. That was really sad. Um, and we saw that Martin Lee also turned himself over to the police, even though the police weren't doing anything. They were just sitting at that cop car. Wow. They were doing it. They weren't doing anything. I can't get over that. Well, we knew because Spider-Man's around, cops are probably pretty lazy in New York City. Let's yeah, be that's honest. what we <laughs> Yeah, we're yeah. Tr we're trying <laughs> we to. Don't wanna, yeah, yeah. We don't, I don't want to get there's involved. A, there's this whole thing, Caboose, <laughs> that we we talk about the interest rates in New York after yeah. seeing May's bill, Aunt May's bill, uh, um, for her yeah. mortgage. Yeah. yeah, that was intense. But we also are now questioning where taxpayers' dollars are going in this New York because the cops just sit around while, yep. it's true. you know, symbiotes are unleashing. In uh huh. York. Yeah, I mean. At a certain point when there's, the, I mean, clearly as well in this game, it's established. It's like a lived in world with other superheroes, not yeah. just Spider-Man. So it's like, at what point, if you're the police, <laughs> do you go, okay, guys, um, 
I th- I'm hoping the Avengers are pulling up for this one because <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I want to fight the giant sand monster. <laughs> I th- we we cons- we got it down to like what was it 15 minutes? We think they take like a 15 minute delay when you call 911 and just wait it out. Just yeah. wait. Yeah. And then they respond because that's a, they're that's hoping. That's a good point. Yeah. yeah I'm yeah. pretty sure that's what. You happens. think there's like a hotline or like there's a dispatch that you get patched through to for Avengers? Oh, threats, like, you know? the, like the like the you'll live call 911 and yeah. they'll say, okay, yeah. do you need an ambulance, police, oh, yeah. firemen, or you know the Avengers? <laughs> the Avengers. <laughs> <laughs> and then and just like, Jarvis answers, Avengers, please. Yeah, yeah, Jarvis answers. I love that. Yeah. Um, that's probably what happens because yeah. I think so. That's I a lot of because, so. but no, people would be calling that nonstop. Right? That's fair. Thinking like, they, like, they're going to oh. get patched through like Tony Stark. Yeah. Yeah. All it's, the villains would be like, oh, uh, you know, I got a Spider-Man emergency. True. <laughs> I'll get true. him now. Easily abused. Yeah. yeah. It's probably like a 50 minute wait and then you get the cops. Like, <laughs> yeah. is, if there's anything else that Spider-Man can't do or the Avengers, please hold. And then it's like, <laughs> what is your emergency? Why, why does this person Because they're probably like just like, like oh. lady from Monsters, <laughs> Inc. <That's laughs> <just> Mike was <laughs> out. Always <laughs> watching. <laughs> No, but it's probably just like nobody really wants the cops at the end there. So it's that old lady who's like, what do you want? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. true. That's, a good yeah. Point. that's true. That's, that's true. Point. Well, none of that happened on last episode because they were dealing with some serious problems, specifically um, Peter coming to the realization or actually us as the players coming to the realization that Peter's actually dealing with a lot and he really is hurting from the loss of Aunt May still yeah. to this day. Um, but thanks to Miles and uh, Martin Lee, he was able to kind of snap out of it. And also you saw the spider pals back and like all, uh, oh. it was very touching on the yeah. heartstrings. Um, and then Peter also got a new suit. Thanks to Martin Lee again. <laughs> um, the anti-venom suit that repels the symbiote not quite sure how that works yet. Maybe Caboose in segment three, you could give us, enlighten yeah, us a bit. We're, we're trying to figure out more about the symbiote. But yeah. Um, and then we found out that Venom went to Dr. Connor's uh, lab and stole the meteor. But also Norman Osborn kind of felt the wrath of Venom firsthand again. Um, so we don't know if that kind of changes his opinion of his son. And then we saw that Haley got caught by some symbiotes and while Miles was saving her, he also was asking her out. No, 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 no. no. Hey. You're, you have a smile on your face, but last episode you were just like, why are you asking her out right well, now? Well, okay, it was not the best time. <laughs> okay, it was go. not the best time. Like, if I was Haley, I would be like, I just got, like, did you not just see those symbiotes? Yeah. <laughs> like, you know. You gotta get the courage up somehow. But also, like, wasn't he just on the phone with Peter and he was like yo Peter like I know you got some crazy stuff going on just wait it out yeah I gotta ask this girl out real quick <laughs> yeah. just just pause and yeah. let me ask Kaylee out and he does ask Kaylee out and she agrees so that's pretty cool and then while he, Miles was I was gonna say hooking up with Haley, but he wasn't yet. Uh, Peter, <laughs> PG thirteen today. I mean, he wasn't yet. They're in the middle. Okay. Anyways, all right, all right. Peter actually went to uh, go to Venom and confront Venom, and we actually hear this final plea from Venom to ask Peter to join him to save the world. Um, but coming out of that, thanks to the help of Miles once again to Peter's rescue, um, we found out that Peter actually knows where the meteor is. And that's how last episode ended. And we are going to get into the finale of our segments, our series here on autosaves for Spider-Man 2. But before we do that, Nick, you mentioned the questions of the day yeah. earlier. I know, I know now, so that's good. Well, wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. I prepped you. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Because I know Caboose now. is here. Oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> so today's question of the day. I want to know your top three superhero video games of all time caboose you are our guest Do oh you please don't first? start with me please don't no? start with me. okay no, no. fine fine i yeah. need to hear your guys's first okay. to remind myself of the, the some of the great ones that are out there i know i think i know my one and two mm-hmm. but i'm trying to remember like i don't know of a lot of games but i need to remember like what's that number three you know okay that's fair that's fair so nick do you want to you because yeah. you're, you're like i have mine yeah, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. I think the first Spider-Man game, okay. the first Insomniac Spider-Man game. Is, 2018. Is, is, your, is your three or your two? I'm not going to rank okay, these. Fine. I'm not going to rank these. Fine. Okay. And then I got to pick one of the four Batman games. 
Okay. Which one? You're just like one it's of got the it. four. Got, yeah. Let me finish. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, okay. I'm going to go with Arkham Knight only because, hear me out. I'm going to go with Arkham Knight only because it it ends the saga. Right? Yeah. It yeah, wraps yeah. everything up. And I really liked the story with the Red Hood and the Joker. And it, oh, that's it, fair. it kind of led me to a place where I didn't expect the story to end. It's also got the best gameplay yes. yeah. easily. And a great wrap up. Yeah. It wraps yeah. up the series better than most video games or TV shows, movies do. Yeah. So I, I'm going to put that there. Even though City probably is the better game. I was going to say City, yeah. I would say story wise, wrapping up, making me feel good near the end. All the surprises, <laughs> everything, great. And then the third one is a little bit of a surprise. I don't know which one in the series was my favorite because there's many. And okay. I don't remember. I think it might be a PlayStation 2 version, but it's Marvel versus Capcom. Oh, oh okay. okay. I love one of those fighting games. Too. Like, I love MVC. Everyone loves Marvel versus Capcom. Marvel versus Capcom 2 is two, yeah. iconic. Two, yeah. Yeah. That's the one. Iconic. Yeah. yeah. Um, the music, mm-hmm. right? Like, it's just, yeah. It's just Show too me good. your moves. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Plus, just to, like, I don't know how many people um, recite, like, lines from the special moves in that game. Yeah. You know, like, Wolverine's like, Berserker Barrage. Yeah. Right? yeah. Like, Tornado yeah. Claw. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> right? Like, so much of that stuff comes from, from Marvel's Capcom. I, I can. I can understand yeah, that. I can respect okay. that. Right. Yeah. For the longest time, I thought Gambit... Does Gambit say credit card? When his attack... That's like, it sounds I don't like he's saying credit card. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he doesn't. Yeah. But he's like, credit card. <laughs> so then I kept saying in my head, like, and now it's like a joke amongst me and my friends. We're like, credit card, debit yeah. card. Like, and that's <laughs> Gambit's call Nice, nice. Um, that's, that's actually a really good list. Thank I was you. going to say, like, amongst my top three is definitely... From the Arkham games, I was going to go with City. Although Knight has a really good story. And I think that's the hard part because superhero games, it's really hard to find good superhero games that balance out the gameplay and story. And they're like kind of on par. Sometimes you have one or the other. And like this one's going to... Guardian of the Galaxy. I was considering it because it has a really good story. It's such a gem, man. It's such a gem. It's such a good story. But then the gameplay... A little clunky. Um, so I'm going to say Marvel vs. Capcom 2. That was on my list. And then this one, mm. I don't think it counts, but I'm going to say anyways. It's technically a superhero movie. Okay. Just not superheroes that we know. South Park Fractured Butthole. Okay. No, okay. it is such a good, it is such a good game. Um, so it is does that such count a good, though? Was, if it gonna, does not count, count, I will go with Deadpool. No. <laughs> <laughs> I will go with Deadpool then. The Deadpool game. Wow. Yeah. Just because it was just so different. Interesting. Really? I, I so think that's interesting. That. I think there's a better hack and slash from that era. Are you thinking Marvel's Alliance? No, I'm thinking X-Men Origins Wolverine. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. This is why you you're this is why you're the expert in this. <laughs> okay. I even had to pull up a list because I was like, video games, superheroes, which See, ones? See, I wish I I'd known this before so I could have yeah. pulled yeah. up a list yeah. too. Um, because like I, in my head, like I'm thinking of games like X-Men Origins, um, be- especially because it's way better than the actual movie it's based on. Yeah. yeah. Um, but okay. Number one for me, if I were to actually put these in order, I think number one is Arkham wait, City. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, oh, again, this is, this is your bread and butter. Yeah. So if we clip oh, this, it's going to oh, be on the internet. Then it's going to live forever. I so, get it. I yeah, get it. Okay. Okay. Right. I get all right. it. So yeah, number, my number one is, is Arkham City. Okay. It's my favorite game of all time. Um, I think this, it's like, it's the perfect package. It's got amazing gameplay that expanded upon the first game. It's got the perfect story. If you're a Batman fan, like this is your Bible, essentially. Yeah. Um, it's got like a great atmosphere. The city, uh, they, they expanded upon like the open world aspect of the first game, even though it wasn't really open world. Um, there's just so much packed in here. It's a game I revisit. Plenty of times over the last couple of years. Um, and it'll be a game that I'll revisit for years and years to come. It's, I think, probably for me, it'll always be the best video, like the greatest game ever made for me. Yeah. Like, I just, I'll never forget where I was when I first booted it up. I'll never forget the experience of just having the case in my hands and being like, oh my, I'm playing the next Batman game. You know, that that first trailer that we saw at like some game awards from 2000, yeah. 2010 or something seeing like the sickly Joker and stuff. So good. So many good memories come from that game. And uh, yeah, the, number one, Arkham City. Number two, 
and I I know I know that there there may seem to be a bit of recency bias, but I've played through it multiple times now. Spider Man Two, I think it's wow. honestly Spider Man Two. I think this is uh, in terms of gameplay the best superhero game when it comes to gameplay. Yeah. Um, like the traversal, there's no game that you have more fun with when you're traversing around a city than you do in this game. The swinging is fast. It's fluid. The web wings are incredible. The combat is so much fun. They streamline the gadgets too, so you're not pulling up a giant wheel of gadgets every single time. The symbiote powers, Miles and all of his abilities too. The way you can team up with another Spider-Man sometimes in the open world. There's so much packed in here. Um, and yeah, I love it. I love it. So I think honestly, my number two is Spider-Man 2. Even if over the years, I don't love the story as much, it's still, it, the gameplay is too good to not acknowledge it as one of the greatest superhero games oh, ever made. Wow. Yeah, I do. Um, it's the true. same reason that why I'd true. understand that you would pick Arkham Knight at your number one. Because for a lot of people, it's their number one strictly almost because of the gameplay. Because when you play Arkham Knight versus Arkham City, it's oh, just, it, it oh, yeah, feels like it's not day. comparable. Yeah, yeah, it's not it comparable. Feels so good, yeah. Um, and so, so that's why I would understand, and that's why I think Spider Man Two is ranked so high for me. But I still think the story is. We're gonna get into that. Yeah, in we're second. gonna get we're into, into the my story. thoughts on the story in, in a bit. My number three. This is so tricky. Okay, and this is why you know. Okay, is this gonna live online forever? Um, it it could be X Men Origins Wolverine. It could be like you said, Ultimate Alliance at one point. Um, or, or I don't yeah, know if you yeah, brought yeah, it up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Ultimate Alliance is so good. It I love so those good. games. Um, even I could pick something like Midnight Suns, which is another underrated gem. Um, but I think to stick with Spider Man, it's Ultimate Spider Man is my number three favorite wow. superhero oh game of all goodness. time. Oh my goodness! It was one of the first superhero games I ever played. It was uh, it, it it increased the love I had for Spider Man at the time tenfold. It got me introduced to a new take, a new iteration. And you get to play as Venom. Yeah. Like that was the whole thing is like Venom was the second playable character. You see how their two stories converge. Even Wolverine pops up in the game at one point too. It was just from a different time. Superhero games, the way they were made then, aren't made like that anymore today. Um, and and that the art style, the way that it was a living comic book, they borrowed so much from the Ultimate Universe and from what they did with those comics and expanded upon it in such a great way with all the people who worked on those comics as well, which I thought to be the best thing about it. They had comic writers, artists, and the whole lot, everybody who worked on that run to be involved with this game so that it didn't feel like a departure. It didn't feel yeah. like, okay, this studio is trying to do their own thing. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but they said, you know what? People love this run of the Ultimate Spider-Man comics. We're going to make it into a game and honor everything that's great about it. And that's why I love it. Oh, my heart. Yeah. Uh, I love that you... I love when people talk about games that they're so passionate about and i have to say your list does have a connection two of them have venom in it and yes wow. yeah you know, well that's what a lot of people drew back to when it came to spider-man 2 right yeah. i think we're, we're good to talk about it at this yeah. point you've been yeah. past yeah, yeah. this episode yeah. you know everyone was comparing spider-man 2 to ultimate spider-man being like okay they made venom playable in a game before insomniac would be crazy not to do it exactly, again exactly yeah and you know what i spoke to brian intahar creative director at insomniac games and he basically said the same thing to me when I asked him. I was like, okay, you need to tell me about playable Venom. And the first thing that he immediately said, he's like, listen, I'm not that smart, but I'm smart enough to know that if I'm going to make a Spider-Man game with Venom in it, he's going to be playable. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, and I was like, okay, he gets it. Like yeah. he understands, he listens to the community and he gets what people want, at least what a majority of people want. Right. Yeah, it's very hard to see someone this uh, this, this creature so powerful yeah, yeah. and not be able to control and feel I mean, that yeah, power. Yeah, you as want well. a little bit of that. You want, feeling, you want right? a little yeah. bit, of, and like Venom is just such a fan favorite. Like it just hits really core Spider-Man fans on another level. So it would be crazy if they didn't. It, it's hard not to argue that he is the most iconic Spider-Man villain. Even though yeah. for me, I think Doc that Spider-Man's the... number one villain is Green Goblin. Yeah. I think that's his arch nemesis. Like that's yeah. the Joker to Batman. But it's it's like I get it when people say that for them that's Venom. I get it. I mean, yeah. that Venom movie, it's hot garbage. <laughs> Still, <laughs> it, it got enough butts in seats to yeah. make like $800 million. Yeah. And now we're on to the third movie coming out like this year, I think. Yeah. Well, we're going to see what Venom makes of this game because after the break, we're going to be concluding our playthrough of Spider-Man 2. It is coming to an end. But will Harry be able to be saved? That's a question we're going to have to find out. If all those symbiotes
let's get out of Manhattan. Goodbye, Earth. Hello, Planet Goo. The meteorite is the source of all the power, right? Creating goo, creating symbiotes. But it was useless until Harry repaired it. Yeah. And that particle accelerator is what damaged it in the first place. Cut off a piece at low power. Right, so what if we crank the power up? Like way past 11. Might destroy it. And free everyone connected to the hive mind. Theoretically. But that reservoir's gotta be mobbed with symbiotes. And you know Harry's not gonna let that rock out of his sight. Unless he sees something he wants more. Me. Just, you know, for illustrative purposes. Harry's still Harry. He thinks he's healing the world. But the dream isn't complete without... His best friend beside him. I can lead Harry away from the meteorite. And I can handle all the symbiotes. While I grab the space rock for illustrative purposes. All right, fire up the accelerator. No more hive mind. World saved. We all get churros? <laughs> Theoretically. Pete, what Connor said about Harry being too far gone. If you can't save him, are it you won't ready? come to that. You two will be able to destroy the rock in time. Let's heal the world. For real this time. All right, Pete goes back to his house to game plan with MJ. And the best part is, this is like something out of Stranger Things. They just like have this like yeah. little map and like yeah. all these little pieces. I want to know what game, like what board game is that? That where they're getting all these pieces. There's like ogres. There's one like of those that looks like just a rock with googly eyes yeah. on it. <laughs> That's, you know, like they had a little cousin come over and yeah, steal yeah, one yeah, of the yeah, pieces yeah. and they had right, to replace right, one of the pieces. Right. But anyways, um, what they realize is that Venom's using the water system, the reservoir, to actually get the symbiotes out of the city um, to speed up the process of Harry's idea of healing the world. Mm -hmm. So the plan is to blow up the reservoir by blowing up, by using the particle accelerator um, at the Emily May Foundation. And then pretty much from there, Peter has to distract them in order, well, distract Venom in yep. order to allow MJ to go in and grab the meteor. <laughs> this is like a total high school hijinks, distraction, like yep. we need, you know, yep. I was a little bit disappointed with this plan. It wasn't, well, as soon as they said, as soon as MJ said that she had to do something, I was like, oh, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> so that was the only thing I was like, oh, I'm going to have to play as MJ again. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, hey. And then she goes full John Wick mode. Yeah. <laughs> what, what's going on here? <laughs> well, she's more. So after this planning, that's what they end up doing. You know, Venom, uh, Peter goes to the reservoir with to lure Venom out, which is yeah. kind of like. That's the part of me where I was just like, "Why isn't Venom supposed to be smarter than this? Like, you know what I mean? He's I understand Harry's very caught up in wanting his best friend to join him in the mission of healing the world. Mm -hmm. But as soon as Peter arrives on the scene, then you have Venom like just pop out and be like, oh, I'll get you when Peter's like, you got to catch me first. I think I think, though, at the end of the day, what the, the draw is there is that Venom hasn't fully like there's not a full symbiosis right there's still a part of harry in venom and harry wants his friend to be there mm -hmm. right it's just corrupted by venom's vision of yeah. healing the world right um and so that chasing him through the city thing which honestly would have been i agree with the internet where they say it would have been a really cool mission that you play yeah um that whole concept i think it's fueled by like it's Harry's best friend. He does want him by his side. Yeah. Right. So it's, it's just, like Venom is seeing what Harry wants and acting on yes, that. Rather to, in their than, minds, they feel they have the same goal, right? Venom wants to get the symbiote back or attached back onto Peter, right? Yeah. And Harry wants his friend by his side to heal the world. And Venom's like, we can we can have the same thing technically here. Yeah. You know? Like, so that's I mean, that's I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm reaching. Maybe, no, I don't you know, think. I think, but, I think you're onto something. I yeah. don't think you're reaching. It's just that the science that like me and Nick were having a hard time, especially in the last episode, I think trying to break down 
how the symbiote reacts because like is the symbiote really trying because from looking back at all what i've known from venom in previous iterations venom latches on to strong people right which is why he sees the power in spider-man like peter and then eddie brock they're low on low and he knows how to manipulate it but they're also strong-minded in some sense they have something that's driving Mm. them where it's like i kind of found that like harder to understand with harry because harry's literally dying like you know what i mean and i understand he's strong-minded which was your point right it's that he's really determined to succeed because of his mother and what he's going through in life yeah but there's still i I guess i'm not 110 percent convinced that venom would latch on to harry it was was the anger too right Mm -hmm. it's all that pure emotion that harry felt after being neglected yeah by peter by his his father, like all those circumstances. And then again, he thought he was going to die. Mm-hmm. So it was once the symbiote came back to him, I think that was what turned him into Venom because now that pure emotion is out there. I think a lot of it has to do for the symbiote, especially is like going for somebody who's like emotionally vulnerable mm-hmm. yeah. to be able to take advantage of that in a sense. I don't know if that's literally what's happening, but it feels like that's kind of the trend yeah. of what the symbiote's purpose is in most cases. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and when it came to it latching back onto Harry, that was definitely a like, this other person has rejected me. Um, like which, survival. I just got to survive. Which is very much what Harry was feeling in that moment too, right? My best friend is rejecting to help me, right? Like I, I've done so much for him and now he's going to let me die. The symbiote is like, I have done so much for Peter. I had made him stronger. I had made him That's a better a Spider-Man. And now he doesn't even want me anymore. So you know what? Fine. I'll take your best friend. I'll go full venom. I'll give, I'll, you know, we'll, we'll try and be fully, uh, there will be full symbiosis here or whatever the case may be. And then, you know, things don't necessarily work out as, as, yeah. as well yeah. as you'd hope. Right. But I think again, like a, a large part of that is the goals were the same for both Harry and the symbiote at that point. And then obviously because of the anger that the symbiote would have been feeling being rejected by Peter and the anger that Harry is feeling being uh you know not not being allowed to be given the symbiote by peter it just it allowed for that moment of them to merge yeah they 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 had a very common goal the common a common enemy front of me yes to be honest at at that time right for harry he he didn't look at peter as the same best friend that they that they the way they saw each other at the beginning of the game right like there was that whole confrontation with peter i mean granted affected by the symbiote at this point saying hey why don't you pop some more pills and tell me how you really feel you know it's like damn man that's that's a good lot i I wrote that one down (laughs) to use later you know if my friends are like having a headache i'll be like you know just pop some pills and not hang out with me then um but you know that's a really good point i don't think i gave it uh that much thought into the common goal like the common yeah. enemy i was yeah. more looking at like the symbiote's just trying to survive and right. do its thing and it survival is spreading more of it everywhere um i think obviously if you start to look at the comics and source yeah. material and things like that there's 100% there's things that don't line up there's things that don't necessarily uh follow through with the way that the comics have set them up and in, in terms of how it should be right mm-hmm. Um, but that's where you get into kind of Insomniac doing their own original take, doing something that's unique and something yeah. that they're, you know, the same way we were talking about Ultimate Spider-Man earlier, right? When they made the Ultimate Spider-Man books, they made sure that, okay, here's all the kind of themes that you expect from Spider-Man, but he's not in college. He's a teenage kid. Yeah. You know? like, and, and it was a huge shift, I think, for people uh, that were fans different. of Spider-Man. Even just even yeah. the whole Ultimate Universe, right? Yeah. Like they they tried to change up everything. and. For me, it's like if the comics can do it, then a movie can do it, a game can do it, and they can be their own unique interpretations that still have those core pillars that yeah. make the characters so iconic, right? And I think that Insomniac has done that, right? Yeah. At least for me. You know, I, I don't prefer I, I don't prefer anti hero venom. I much prefer when Same. he's a villain. I much yep. prefer, prefer big monster, scary dude venom. And I think that they nailed that in this game. You know, saying this is a different inter- like telling of a Spider-Man story. Like I do like that Insomniac is bringing in all these different elements. One of the things 
that I know Nick's not quite happy about is an MJ um, <laughs> segment in the game. No, it's and not that, that that happens because yes, we 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 end up where Miles, after Peter lures Ma- yep. Venom away, yep. Miles takes care of the symbiotes outside, and then Venom or MJ, sorry, heads in to Venom's lair to get the meteor, and yep. you take over. And she has her her little saber gun, her, yeah. and now it's fitted Yo, she with takes Sonic out these symbiotes easier blast. than sometimes playing as Spider Man. <laughs> I'm so happy. I think they they made MJ playable so much more enjoyable. It's yes, way it's better. Way more enjoyable. Way, way but then better. when you're you, when you're beating up on these, you know, Craven Hunters and you're beating up on the symbiotes, it becomes unrealistic. Yeah. So then they, yeah. I think they went too far in one direction where yeah, MJ yeah. became overpowered and I kind of rolled my eyes. I think I that. agree with that. I honestly I really would have loved if that segment that you're talking about towards the end of the game where she's kind of in that symbiote hive. I really would have loved if it reflected that mission where she's running from Peter. Like, let that it be was yeah. a, good, a survival, yeah. horror survival horror yes. mission, you yeah. know? Like, because yeah. I re- I loved Great when point. they did that because that at that point, it's like, it's integral to be playing as MJ yeah. for this mission. Because you and have it to really adds to, to the that game. Fear. Right? And we were when we got to that episode, that chapter, we were talking about how it like it is like a horror movie. Like yeah. they really yeah. like I could see Insomniac if they wanted to do a horror game, I could totally see them doing that because they did it so well. And in this chapter, you know, when you get to this point and MJ's going through the reservoir and she's using her sonic blast at these symbiotes, you then come across this massive symbiote yeah. uh, who's like, it's like a mini boss battle and and those things are tough they are when you're spider-man so they are hard to beat man yeah it takes a lot yeah exactly and you have yes you have your saber with the sonic blast <laughs> MJ, MJ. but then it's just like mj and what i understand you're vulnerable yeah. here but you got to be yeah. more vulnerable so i don't know if it was if i had seen a tweet or if somebody had mentioned this to me um but like i i think that this mission should have played out essentially like like if you're in a room full of clickers in The Last of Us, you know, yeah. where it's like these things will tear your face off if you if the if they get caught or if you get caught by them. And I think, you know, the game already had a mechanic where if somebody starts to see you, you see that bar start to raise. They already had like stealth, yeah. right? Yeah. For MJ and her missions. So I feel like this would have been a really good opportunity to take advantage and just go full horror with it. Cause I did find it very weird. Like I didn't mind that, okay. She can shoot the little cronies, but when there was a giant symbiote boss in front of her and she's got this rinky dink little yeah, gun I know. going to town on this yeah. dude, I was like, okay. She has quite a lot of uh, sonic blasts as well, which I felt yeah. like it should have been more limiting and it should have definitely played harder. We needed here. more of like an yeah. every bullet counts type of situation, right? Yeah. yeah. The problem is everyone hated the MJ story from. The, the first, first game yeah. that I think that if you try that, people are still going to complain. So they were just like, let's crank it up, overpower, yeah, yeah. and then so you can't complain they, at us they anymore. They went too far in the other yeah. direction. Yeah. It was almost like a uh, like outer space game. That's yeah. what it felt like. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, once you defeat <laughs> the symbiote brute, MJ makes it back to Miles. <laughs> Sure, your plus one isn't invited to our high school reunion, Harry. Harry. This is where we became best friends. Yeah, it is. That's where we become brothers. My favorite part about that moment 
you have that join us yeah like yeah. simpsons where it's like join us yeah. you know join us lisa oh, join, join us, us yeah. lisa yeah um so you have this moment and then it's like <laughs> On top of Venom, as he's saying, join us, Peter, you have work for Oscorp. <laughs> <laughs> the perfect well, even, commercial. Even that part when he lands in the gym and he goes, you know, like, this is where we became yeah. best friends. And now it's where we become brothers. It's like, oh, man. Tony Todd. Yeah. Man, Tony freaking Todd. His performance throughout this game as Venom, like, I can't hear. Well, Tom Hardy. I could, but I would prefer Tony. Oh, yeah. uh, any day, any uh, day. It, he does it so well. But we enter this boss battle with Peter, and we have Venom now at the place they became friends. <laughs> yep. Oh my God, so good. Um, so for this fight, I was trying to get as much distance as possible yep. from Venom, just because it is a pretty big arena. You have these three platforms it's like no. the football field is that a soccer field i don't even know if this it's the football field broken football in field, half i, I think. think it's yeah the football yeah. field broken, broken in half. two yeah and then you have the basketball court uh, where we where we saw peter shooting hoops earlier yeah. in the game oh, and then we got to play it seriously spider-man 2k yeah. um <laughs> But like, what was really uh, scary for me is mm -hmm. these ground attacks that yeah. Venom was putting out because it completely wipes. Or oh, where you the, have to move into where a different you have part, to part move of the arena, yeah, in, in a different part of the arena. Yeah. How did you guys find this boss battle? Because this is was, like the moment I think I was we've playing been on waiting normal. for. I died yeah. like five times. Really? Like seriously, this was a really and and I think part of it, it's it's not even um, Venom's attacks more so than it's like the breaks. Mm. When when you can't attack them anymore and you have yeah. to use your special abilities and all the minions are spawning, I didn't know how how well to deal with the green ones at the time. Yeah. I didn't know that if you just web them once, they're gone. You yeah. know, so I was like, I need to find like creative ways to group these guys together and then use my web grabber so I can get as many at once, right? Um, so I think that it's it's probably it's my fault more no, than no, anything. No, I had that too. I died a few times, but it was because I was trying to figure out where to like escape that ground attack and yeah. then also yeah. deal with the minions because of my gadgets. Yeah. Like it's like, oh, I have to wait for them to recharge. Yeah, and, and so he, it's like he hits that hard timing. too, man. Yeah. He hits, and sometimes he'll mix it up on you. Sometimes he's going for a move that you can only counter. Yeah. Sometimes he only goes for a move that you can only dodge. Yeah. But it's like within the same string of animations. So you're expecting the move that you counter. Exactly. And then he does the move that you can only dodge. And then he's got you in his mouth and starts tearing you apart. And it's like, oh my God. You <laughs> you're know, like, like, really, Venom? I'm dead again. <laughs> How about for you? Did this deliver uh, that first... Like, I mean, we know we're coming to the yeah. finale here. Like, to me, I'm going into this thinking this is the final battle. And it's intense because of the performance of voice acting, yeah. but also because of this arena that we have and these attacks. I think it it, it did live up to it, right? It, it felt 100 like, percent for me. That is so so <laughs> grandiose. This guy's excited about everything. What am I talking about? Of the course. spectacle is so good, yeah. and the fact that they make it so full circle by bringing you back to the school, which I really love. That the game did a great job at not making you feel like you missed out on their friendship. Mm -hmm. Like it caught you up on a lot of what made them such good friends. Peter was there when Harry found out about his mom mm -hmm. and her sickness. And then now he's dying of that same thing. Yeah. You know, and it's just like this, this survival is all that's fueling him. And it's like, no matter the cost, which is what's bad about it. But them coming back to the school, fighting on the football field, oh, the lighting heart. is so good. It's just, it's, it's so it's, it's really good. Man. And it's then you hear, so good. you also hear Peter during the fight. He, you know, he's being Peter. He's, he's being Spider-Man. He's, he's pleading. Ple he's yeah. pleading. And he's saying, you know, he has to free Harry with more anti-venom. You know, he's still in the mindset that he's going to save his friend at all costs. And I well, think that just shows their friendship and what it means to Peter. I, I think what I find so interesting about it too, and you get, you get shades of this in the fight against Scream as well, is that... Peter's not talking like, oh, this isn't you, you know? He knows that some of the things that Harry as Venom is saying could have some, like, element of does, truth to yeah, it, right? I would say does. Same with yeah. when he was fighting with, with MJ's scream. Some of the things that she was saying was almost like the things she's been wanting to say, mm -hmm. and now it's all coming to the surface because of the way that the symbiote takes advantage of you in such an, uh, an emotionally vulnerable state. Um, and so, like, I love that when they, were, when they were arguing, when Peter was pleading with them, it wasn't from a... From a point of like, this isn't you. Yeah. You know, it wasn't from like a point of saying like, you're better than this or this and that. It's like, listen, like, 
we we can heal the world still, but yeah. not like this. Yeah. You know, like he, him trying to plead with Harry to the point of saying, hey, I understand why you're upset. I understand why you're angry with me, but we need to do this a better way. You know, and I found that so interesting. And I think during that, when you're hearing him plea, you hear that like Peter's trying to save his friend at all costs, trying to help him see the light. But Peter's also very stern on his stance that he will never help venom yeah heal the yep. world in his way because it's not right so i feel like it's getting to a point where we may see it break and it may be one or the other peter may have to choose the responsibility aspect again yeah. but we after yeah. these two phases uh with venom well venom flies away Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> like, what Donny Cates, Ryan Stegman, like those runs, like the, the the newer Venom stuff from the comics is so cool. Yeah. And it like recontextualizes everything that you might have known about the symbiotes in general from your knowledge from the past. Uh, and the fact that Insomniac pulled from a lot of that stuff in this game, I thought was really great, honestly. It, I can't believe it. It gave me this vibe of Spawn. Like yeah. it's yes. Spawn's yes. cape. Absolutely. Like, it just it looked really cool. And I think it played into more like how menacing Venom is. So I appreciated that. Well, even like too, um, when when I first got my hands on with the game, like back in September, like a month before it came out, um, uh, PlayStation Canada brought me out to LA to get hands on. And we played that mission where you go to through Dr. Connor's lab and then you see the meteorite for the first time. And you see that swirl. Yep. And I was like, oh my God, like, are they, they're, they're doing, doing like it. the newer origin yeah. of the symbiotes and stuff. And I thought it was so cool. And there's even a couple of moments throughout this game where I was like, are we going to see like null and, and go we'll like into it. like the really deep lore of the symbiotes right now? Like that would be so cool. They didn't go down there. But I think Maybe it's okay they that will. they did it. They because I, I, I kind of, I kind of like yeah. they didn't as well. Yeah. I'm glad that they kept it more personal. You know, it's still, it's still about Spider-Man at the end of the day. Um, but I, I did like that. That yeah. was like, hey, this is this is the origin we're going with this time. I, I thought that when was so Scream cool. appeared, I was like, one of the five. Scream. Like, oh my gosh, they're yeah. doing this. When the wings popped out, it's just, it's so heavy metal, man. Yeah. It's, it's, it's so cool. I mean, so come obvious. on. <laughs> I mean, it's like, we can't get over it. Yeah. Uh, but obviously, Venom found out about the meteor being taken. This was one step where I was like, Pete, you should have known. It's a hive mind. Yeah. A hive mind. And yeah. it's through that hive mind that Venom gets tipped off. And we see this now boss battle we had with Peter and Venom now have the baton tossed to Miles yeah. to take over the fight. Same two phases. Um, and it's just really cool. I really like that. Like now we get to fight as Miles. Yeah. And I'm kind of worried because, yeah. you know, there's no anti Venom suit here. And also, Venom is throwing symbiote fireballs. Yeah, I was. I, I'm with you on that. Honestly, I kind of like that going into this part of the boss fight. I was like, "Yo, I'd be really scared yeah. right now." If I, was, I was like, "This dude is massive." First of all, he just kicked my best friend's butt. You know, like he just tossed Peter Parker's the one with like the anti-Venom suit. Yeah. yeah, 
he just tossed him like a piece of trash, you know, and now I have to fight this guy, you know, and, and I mean, I love as well that at this point, Venom's like evolved to like the symbiote just looks yeah. grosser and, you know, it, uh, it's just, ah. Uh. Let's talk about it, Nick, because you love boss battles. Yeah. Was it terrifying for you as Miles yeah. to go into this fight? How did you do? I wasn't prepared for winged venom and it was a lot more difficult than I thought. Yeah. Um, I, I did feel the first fight with, with Peter was a little bit easier because once you get the mechanics, right, I feel like you can time yeah. your attacks yeah. perfectly. That's fair. This one threw me off for a loop. Okay. Um, and I, I, you're, you're in the moment where you really feel like you're in trouble. Yes. Um, which I really yes. liked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think for me, I, I remembered actually that I first tried this one and I think a large part of it is that there aren't like the in-between waves where you have to fight a bunch yes. of symbiotes, yeah, yeah. you know? It's just like dump all the attacks that you can at this guy right yep. now and then you have those little sound wave boxes that you can toss yep. them to And then his to ground attack him. also like forces you to get that distance exactly. but then it feels like even in those moments they go by so quickly because yeah. I I don't know if Venom got really fast in this moment in this fight but it was just like I I lo- wrote right here less room for error get the hell yeah, away time. from yeah. Venom. <laughs> yeah. I think the only thing that that would have really sent it over the top for me is honestly if this was reversed, if you did the miles section first and then the Peter fight no. was the way to cap off the no. boss battle. I wanted I the boss this. battle to end with Peter I versus can, I, Venom. I That's fair. That. Um, just because of the emotional stakes of it, the fact that they yeah. are best friends. Because the when Peter's like pleading to him and they're fighting and then the music is swelling, it really felt like this is it. Like when See, the, when I when that I feel health like is depleted, that, the game is over. That's you know? fair, but I think if they scaled back the pleading in that moment, I kind of like the fact that it went. Uh, away from that cliche of like oh you know the person that is op peter in this moment with the anti-venom goes last like i like the fact that he goes first and you're kind of it sets you up that like you know maybe this isn't gonna go well because it looks like venom's maybe then in a a perfect world i would have asked for one last phase where it's peter and miles yeah you know and and they're in its gameplay yeah um because i do love the cutscene that follows right and i'm sure again we're gonna get into that but um, I don't know. Like at this point, like I, I really am just nitpicking. You know, uh, everyone online likes to say that I just love everything unabashedly, <laughs> um, and especially with Spider Man Two. Like I think it's they did phenomenal. It so well, yeah. You know, I think it's phenomenal. But there's there's certainly some things like I would have changed, or at least I would have wished for for just a little bit more. Just yeah, to, and I'm not asking for yeah. a lot. You know, I'm not no, asking just for a another lot. phase with yeah. both main just characters. Just a whole new set of animations. Know, yeah. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just no, but but like I, again, either I would have had it play in reverse, or just maybe one extra phase where you had the both of them together in gameplay. But other than that, I mean, again, yeah. like if we're talking strictly narrative wise, like I think it's so well put together. It's just like yeah. a perfect finale. Oh, I was just gonna add. Now that I think about it, that you're talking out through it like the football field scene, yeah. you think that it's that cliche where he's going to be able to save Harry. But right. That doesn't happen. And then the wing situation is like, okay, now he's out of control. Yeah. 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 I do like that aspect. It kind of threw me for a loop because That's I thought fair. it was going to be That's fair. kind of a cliche. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I'm with you on that as well, where you think like this is the end. And then it's like, oh, it's still, still going. going. Yeah. Not yeah. even that it's still going, but it's getting even crazier. Yeah. You know? And the fact that he's flying around, oh my goodness. I'm yeah. just like, oh, then I'm Visually, gonna... it's so Because good. you're so used to a Spider-Man usually having, uh, you know, you go back to the Craven fight, right? You have that edge because you have that vertical yeah. against your enemies. But then yeah. with Venom flying around, I was just like, oh my god. That's very true. Yeah. That's very true. Yeah. I think I really like that about it as well is that like, no, you, you, you can't just get up yeah. above and start swinging around yeah. and use yep. that to your advantage. Now the dude's on level playing field. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, uh, level playing field, uh, not really, because Miles gets thrown <laughs> across the Emily May Foundation um, next. Well, on the other side of Peter, who also got thrown at the beginning of this uh, scene. But guess who comes to the rescue? Our girl MJ throws a sonic <laughs> blast just in the nick of time ah. um, it, and saves Miles from being crushed by the meteor. It also triggers Harry, though, uh, for the Venom, the symbiote to kind of scale back and for us to finally see Harry at this point. Yeah. And he is pretty aware 
of yeah. what's yeah. happening. And he's pretty clear um, that he wants this to stop. Um, so we still are seeing that, like you said, the symbiote's not fully merged and not, mm -hmm. not fully aligned with uh, yeah. Harry because Harry is still fighting back so i guess he's not that annoying after all um we then see <laughs> venom fly away and uh thankfully we see nit um i was gonna say we yeah, see nick in the time we see <laughs> we see miles and then we see peter um zip on and they're trailing behind venom but you have this scene that plays like a hot potato moment where they're trying to grab the meteor yeah. and yeah. it's triggering quick time events. So, so you have uh, Peter grab the meteor, oh, throw the it to Miles. Air, right? Yeah, yeah throw it so to good. Miles. So good. And then Miles grabs it, but then Venom grabs it and then he throws it back to Peter. Like it played. That quick time event played so well. Well, especially the part where you're just mashing square and both the Spider-Man just yeah. beating the crap out of Venom. Exactly. I love, too, the scale that they, like, I think what I really, really loved, and you were seeing it in the promotional material, and I, were ho I was hoping they were going to deliver on it in the game, is the fact that he is, like, a towering yeah. creature. Yeah. You know, he's not just like, okay, he's, like, 10 feet, right? He's like, no. This thing is, like... 15 times your size, yeah. man. I love that. I love it. Uh, it's so yeah. good. Uh, but when we uh, take to the sky and we follow up, we get the meteor. I'm done. Either way, Pete. We still have time? No, we don't. It'll kill them. And then it'll kill you. Let's heal the world, Pete. Together. ends up with the meteor and uses it in the particle accelerator with and starts to try to blow up the meteor by charging the accelerator with his powers and then while that's happening you have this <laughs> emotional moment between Peter and Venom, this fight where Harry comes to the realization, I guess his plea from trying to get Peter to join him in his mission or Venom, him and Venom's mission to then now join me in like really healing the world mm -hmm. and ending this fight yeah. by killing Harry. Oh my gosh. And then he does it. Yeah. He he does it. Yeah. He didn't learn his lesson. If we go to one of the side missions with uh, Mr. Cletus Cassidy, mm -hmm. the reason why he ends up getting the symbiote is because Peter doesn't want to finish the job and wants to save the guy, right? Yeah. This but is that the is, same but scenario. that's classic. Well, he listen, Peter. But that's, that's his best that's friend. That's the thing, yeah. I know it's his best friend, but what Dr. Connors told him what Harry is telling him now. It's like the whole <laughs> you thing. Can't the job, you, can't buddy. Say, you can't say outside of this emotionally compelling, re <laughs> compelling reason for why he shouldn't do this. He should, you know, it's like, no, I mean, it's, it's his best friend, right? He, I know. Yeah. he fought uh, as, as, as long as he could to try and see if there was another way out because it's his best friend because he loves him, you know? Yeah. And it's that, I mean, we just saw it in the clip that I love you 
from Peter to Harry, it's it's more so than anything. It's more of like a like a letting go, right? Because this whole game is about Peter and his grief and yeah. the fact that he hasn't been able to let go of it. You know, he's still holding on to all that grief after Aunt May's death in the first game. Yeah. And this game was him trying to have some form, at least towards the end there, of closure, of being like, listen, I, I did everything I could mm -hmm. here. Because in the first game, I think the reason why he felt so much grief is because he felt like maybe he didn't do enough. Right. Well, yeah, I think and that's it was why like still hanging on to it. Exactly. Going into this one. Well, right? and I think this is such it, I mean, they're both really hard losses. But I think for this one, it's like he he has a hand to play in this one. Like he's true. He 100%. feels much more, um, I think, liable for Harry's life. Responsible. <laughs> I didn't want to go yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to go there because then it gets me thinking about Uncle Ben. But that's that's why, but you know, to your yeah. point, right, of saying, well, why didn't he just finish the job or why didn't he just do the job again? I think it's it's a large part of the grief that he held on to from that first yeah. game that goes into this next one where he's like, I, I am going to till the very bitter end until I have nothing left in me do everything in my power to save my best friend here. Yeah. And once he realizes he can't, he needs to just like at least send one message to his friend, you know, something to 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 remember him by so that at least they go out on good terms. He says, I love you, you know? And it's just like incredible. And the writing that delivery acting, too, like incredible. I think usually when you hear like something like that in this moment be directed and like acted, it's like you hear it as like, man, I love you, but like you hear the pain. Yeah. Like he's yeah. not ready to say goodbye. Exactly. And I think with Spider-Man as a whole, that line with great power comes great responsibility. The whole idea of Spider-Man, he's constantly trying to learn that lesson. Yeah. No matter what what he He's constantly faced with it. He's faced know? with it, but he never fully learns that like that that lesson. He understands that helps him guide helps guide him, yeah. but he can never come to the conclusion because he doesn't want to believe yeah. that that responsibility has to be sometimes the risk of the people closest to him. The unfortunate away. reality of being Spider-Man and every single interpretation of the character has done or has dealt with this is that it's, there's a tragedy to yeah. it, right? Yeah. There, it just, it's never always great to be Spider-Man when Spider-Man wins, Peter Parker loses. Right. Yeah. But in some instances it's both right because of spider being Spider-Man because of that great power, there's this great responsibility. And most of the time, it's that aspect of it that leads to tragedy, leads to losing Aunt May, losing Gwen Stacy from the original yeah. comic books, right? Yeah. In this instance, losing his best friend. And honestly, this game in a lot of ways, the symbiote storyline in a lot of ways, is meant to be his greatest tragedy, right? His biggest failure, right? Um, and and I think that they did a really good job illustrating that in this game. He, he doesn't succeed in this moment. Yeah, and, yeah. And, well... He's hurting. Give me some room. I don't know if it's gonna work, but I gotta try. There are traces of brain activity, but his chances of coming back are very slim. Just keep him alive.
Get the G serum ready. ASAP. So we find out that Harry ends up being in a coma because obviously he doesn't have the suit. I'm not sure if it's like he's in a coma, like they induced the coma to him so he could just survive. Again, I think he was already in the coma. We're not doctors, so yeah. I'm not going to go there. Maybe. Um, But then obviously Norman is very upset at this. Such an awkward moment. Why is it obvious? What do you mean? Why isn't it obvious? What was the He's last been thing? Pleading. Okay, okay, He's okay, been okay. Pleading. I have seen I have seen thing? so many people bring this up. Did you you watch the Sam Raimi movies, right? Yes. How did you feel at the end of Spider Man One when there's almost that same reaction? Peter brings Norman. Yes. Seemingly. Yes. Drops him off gently onto that couch. Yeah. And Harry's fight or flight response is, "What have you done to him?" However, he's dead. What did Norman say in this it, game? What, what's, what did he say? Do what you can to save my son. He saved your son. Your son is not dead. But Okay, but but how does... Okay, no, no, no. no, no, no. But that's a giant but then, venom. How but, else? But no, I think no, it's no, because no, 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 the no, no, reason no. why... I'm sorry. No, because the reason is, why... This is this kid's father. The yes. kid is now in a coma. He's obviously at this point just... He he's fueled by rage and and he he's extremely emotional after what he is looking at in yep. front of him. He needs something to blame because Norman's just not a good person. At the end of the day, that's what it comes down to. I think well, is that Norman is just for him. It's never his fault. Yeah, he was just trying to save his son. He was just trying to do good by see, him. See, but I disagree he with he you. He couldn't possibly see that to be the case for Spider Man. Well, it has to be that someone did this to my see, son. It similar, couldn't be. It couldn't be that I did this to my son. No, see, I don't think. I don't think at this point Norman is there yet. I think with his last conversation with Spider Man and when he when saw he calls Venom, them, yeah, right, yeah. and he's like, save save him and when he made that plea to venom like just give the suit back to like give me harry back give my son, i think goes, we i are, are your, your son, son. Oh, yeah. such a good line yeah. <laughs> but i think it's because his idea of saving harry he knew the symbiote was working for harry he doesn't under like it, Norman was not there when he saw Harry become like that. Like he doesn't know what led to that. So yeah. in his mind, he just saw the suit was working. It didn't work. Spider-Man was there for some reason and it step, it didn't work. And now he doesn't have the suit and now he's sick. I think his saving Harry was just make the suit work like it was working before. That's, and, but, and I think, think that's, that's why happened. he's pissed. But that's, that's still my that's point is pissed. that he just sees that his son is in a coma now and that he's in Spider-Man's arms. He's going to look for something to blame because even from the very beginning of the game, yeah. they try to make it very obvious to the player that Harry is not a big fan of his dad. OK, he has nightmares about his dad forcing the symbiote yeah. onto him. In a lot of ways, Harry just wanted to die. He didn't yes. want to keep living with this sickness. He didn't want to be forced into this tank with a bunch of symbiote tendrils wrapped around him. He didn't want to lie to his friends. Yeah. His dad forced him to do this. Or his dad was willing to do what. He needed to do for the safety Which of his son. So, so yeah. Are you Norman Osborn? Because that's what Norman would say. <laughs> I mean, you know? I, <laughs> that's, uh, in my that's, opinion, that's, Amanda Waller is not very, a villain, that's and Norman Osborn is not necessarily. Well, that's very evil obviously at this point. Norman's motivation is that he thinks he's doing what's best for his son, but he's doing it to the point where it's like. It's worse yeah. than letting his son die. And love sometimes makes you go blind. A hundred percent. It makes well, you crazy. So would he have gotten more upset if if Harry was dead? I'm sure he would have. Of course. Oh, yeah. I think I think but he there, still was, no, but there was yes, no there he's was still no still gonna be upset. I think at the point when Spider Man got involved with Venom and when Norman saw that correlation, when Harry started to not be Harry and started to be Venom. He automatically associated that had to do with something with Spider-Man. Yes. He's listening to a lot to JJ's podcast, you know, and he's, he's just, he just he's deflecting. Listen. He is looking for something <laughs> to blame because he couldn't possibly put the blame on himself. No, he's deflecting because the suit was working. But we'll talk about it more in segment three. We still have. Therapy. That's yeah, all I'm saying. He does, he does need therapy. <laughs> um, but you know what? We still have more to go through because. We're not quite done with the ending yet. You ready? Uh, Miles. I've been meaning to talk to you 
uh, about something. Uh, I mean, I have been talking to you there all, all the time. It's, it's, it's great uh, to talk. So many good talks. Uh, I just haven't been talking to you about what I should have been talking to you about. Pete. Uh, wait, uh, let me start again. I got this. All of it. Go be Peter Parker for a while. Are you, are you sure it's, it's a big city? I can handle it. As long as I can still call you for advice. You don't need it. <sighs> Maybe not now, but there'll come a time. I'm here for you, always. Big bro. hear peter get to the thing that he's been wanting to say from the beginning of the game pretty much that he wants to step back as spider-man he he was able to make that decision and communicate that kind of to miles who knew it was coming um i i love that you know miles just keeps wowing me in this game because it just shows how how much growth he has from when we played as him in Miles Morales to even like the beginning of this game to now and also like surprising Peter along the way that he's able to read Peter and know that it's like, don't worry, I got this. You take time off. Does it negate a little bit of what Miles' story was throughout the game that he is now full-time Spider-Man when a lot of the problems that he that he faced was he was avoiding his real life? No, because I think he was always like he's always going to be full time Spider Man, right? Like a mm -hmm. part of it was just that he needed to acknowledge that he needs help. You know, right? I think that's a a big part of the lesson that Miles needed to learn in this game was that like his friends are there for him, not ne like not necessarily strictly to be a resource, but they can be a resource, right? Yeah. Like you need a little bit of help with your college essay, reach out to us, man. Talk mm -hmm. to us. Yeah. Let us yeah. know. Let's let's work it out together, right? And that's a big part of the reason why um he was so like why he reached his level of success as Spider-Man in his own game because Genki was there with him every step of the way. They worked on that suit. Genki said, hey, no, you keep talking about Spider-Man like you're not Spider-Man. You are Spider-Man, right? And I think that that was, um, that was just something that he needed to remind himself more of in this game because he was very much thinking like, I'm in this alone. Mm -hmm. I got to do this by myself, yeah. right? Not realizing he's got Haley, he's got Genki, and he's got Peter now yeah. too, you know? And, well, uh, and that's that's maybe, he didn't throw out this game. He wasn't yeah. answering his call. Yeah, I gotta go. Yeah, but, but I think it's like that that you see the two of them, and you see how Peter was looking like he had it all together, but not really asking for help because he was also concerned for Miles yep. and his school life and his regular life yep. and his personal life. But that made him vulnerable to the symbiote, right? Mm -hmm. And then with Miles, I think coming to that realization that like he's got it. I think it's like he's got that balance as well as like we don't know if he decides to go to college or not. I think mm -hmm. like it's also that moment in his life just as a teenager trying to figure out what's next yeah. where like maybe he doesn't know and that's okay. Maybe he needs to take time off to figure it out. And for him being Spider-Man and getting more involved with Spidey things was that relief from those pressures yeah. which could also just be like what he wants to do and yeah. he's just kind of afraid to say that i i did wish here that we got a little bit more closure on the personal side for miles like we know that he's gonna go on a date with Haley, but we didn't quite see where his school life let up yeah. um i think that's that's something i'm okay with waiting until they get to like an inevitable third game to catch us up on what's been going on with the spider-man i also think there's no i mean we talked about this there's no way peter's retired um like, come on. <laughs> Once you're a spider pal, you're yeah. always a spider pal. But also, like, it's it totally makes sense that that this could be a defining moment for him. He just lost he lost his aunt. He's still dealing with the grief of that. And then as he was starting to get over the grief of that, or starting to let go, he loses his best friend. Now his best friend's in a coma. And there's like all this tragedy surrounding him that he needs, like, 
He needs to just be Peter Parker for a little while. And I mean, it was set up throughout the game as well. You know, that yeah. Coney Island mission is a big, like big foreshadowing for what Peter wanted at the end yeah. of the game. Um, it's to just be Peter Parker for a bit. Um, he's been so consumed uh, by being Spider-Man yeah. that it's like he lost a part of, you know, enjoying life. Yeah. Right. Um, and so because he has Miles now, because Miles is there for him, he can take a bit of a break, but he's not retired, man. Like, I, we're, we're going to yeah. have to talk about There's it. There's not a universe that exists where Peter Parker at the start of Marvel Spider-Man 3 is in suiting up and getting ready to jump back into action. He's suiting up for, you know, maybe just going out night in town. But I don't know if he's going to be suiting up. He'd probably be coming back. He might be coming back even sooner than Spider Man Three if there's a DLC with with Carnage, right? Like because well, we'll see, we'll see. We got to talk more about what's going to happen next. I'd assume. I mean, it's all the things we want later on. I don't want Carnage to be safe for Spider Man Three because I want the symbiote storyline to be wrapped up in this game. I don't think it will. I kind of, I, I, I don't know. We got to, we got to see. Okay, anyways, anyways. But this He's is how Spider Man 2 ends. And uh, this is, th that's the game. So after this break, we're going to break down a little bit more and also an after credits. What do you want? The Spider-Men. You know who they are, don't you? Why? They ruined my son. We all have to experience loss. Even you, Norman. What are you writing? The final chapter. This is Albert. Uh, hi. Nice to meet you. Oh, and uh, <laughs> this is my daughter, Cindy. So we pick up with our Spider-Man, mm -hmm. the Spider-Man, Miles Morales, and we find out that he actually is going to do his college essay. So he's applying to schools, yep. um, which is great. And he's on his date with Haley, I think this is the first date. First date at home with the no, mom. First date yeah, and yeah. she's meeting the parents? I Damn. Mean, I know well, she no, already they, knows they the know parents. But is this yeah. a good first date? We got to teach Miles. Horrible, no. yeah. <laughs> And it's a double date. It's I mean, we got to teach. We got to teach things. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, this is a double date. And we find out that Miles' mom has been dating the dad of Sydney Moon. Yep. Yeah. Um. This, if you're, if I, if you're, <laughs> like I, that was my Agreed, reaction, yeah. right? <laughs> like if you're a fan of Spider-Man and you like watch even Into the Spider-Verse, 
Yeah. Like, you yeah. know who Sydney Moon is. Yeah. And like the fact that they threw that in here, because with the side missions of the bots, right? The spider bots. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, that's kind of wrapped. We're like not going spider verse. Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. it, it's, it's going to come maybe in a future game. They're not going to touch that here. Yeah. Do we think Sydney Moon's already has powers? No, no. Um, if they, I mean, obviously, if they were following the origin of Sydney Moon, then it would be that she'd have her powers already, right? Because she's yeah. in the comics, she's bitten by the same spider that bit Peter, and it's just that, like, right before it dies, it falls yeah. off his hand, and bites her too. There's she was also some, in that lab. She there's, was in there, that lab. There's, there's some weird, honestly, like it didn't have to make Silk sense. is it, a little weird yeah. in the comics. Uh, there's some like very yeah. questionable storylines. And there's some stuff I, ho I hope they don't follow. But um, <laughs> what I liked in terms of what they're setting up here is yeah. she looks very young, yeah. right? Almost like young, probably younger than Miles, you know? I think so, yeah. Um, and so what I'm hoping that we could potentially be getting here is more of like a, like a full on passing of the torch to the point where Peter passes the torch to Miles to now become the guy who, who trains the new protege being Cindy Moon being Silk, right? Yeah. But it's just the question becomes, how do they make it that without there being a Spider-Verse, there are now canonically three separate people yeah. bitten yeah. by radioactive spiders and having spider powers. I think Insomniacs really got their work cut out for them to make this make sense. Um, I know there's going to be some suspending of disbelief here. Yeah. Um, I just hope that it's not going to be the, to the point where we're going to have to be like, okay, like she's got really cool gameplay, so we're just gonna have to like really brush past some of the questionable well, story stuff. That's you know? why I kind of want to see that she does have powers at this point because I also think it's a good nod to the game. Like when you think of when Miles and when Peter first like moved in, right? He it had was his powers. it was yeah, like yeah. that's how he kind of revealed his powers. Yeah, so that's it's like true. kind of like a cute nod to like, oh, you know, there was a novelty to that though, you that's know. True. And I wouldn't want to see it like repeated again. But how many origin stories? And I think this is why Into the Spider Verse, and I know we're not we're not talking movies here, but we got to yeah. touch on them, especially with this game. Didn't have to like go through full origin stories. They had yeah. okay, let's do this one, one more. last time because yeah. it's like very similar origin stories. Do we? Yeah, yeah. I know we want to know what happens, but do we need to know what happens to care for these characters and for the story to be good? I think I don't it's think different. So. I think it's different with a movie where your runtime is two hours, so you need to have moments like that to just say like it let's could be get thirty hours quickly. for a game. That's the thing is that's my point is with a game you have a lot more substance to really delve deep into things like an origin story, and I think someone like Silk. Especially being a really new character, which is yeah. why I was surprised. And I'm actually, I applaud Insomniac for not just going with what would have been obvious here and yeah. just pick Gwen Stacy. Um, I'm surprised that they wanted to go with Cindy Moon and decide to do Silk instead because she's, again, she's very new. Yeah. I mean, not a lot of people in the comic books or, or in the in, in the space that are fans of Spider-Man or whatever are aware of this character. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to be very, I'm interested to see what Insomniac plans to do. I personally, I don't even think she's going to become Silk in the third game. Yeah. I think this is still, it's a passing of the torch in the third game to lead into potentially even another trilogy, a four, five, and six. Interesting. Of now it's Miles and Silk. Well, she's probably just going to be that annoying stepsister, maybe, if, maybe. Uh, you know, the parents get married. But where do we see, you know, we heard Insomniac, Insomniac, why am I saying it like that? <laughs> we heard Insomniac already confirm there will be a Spider-Man 3. Well, I mean, they haven't said well, it. Well, I but mean, they <laughs> said <laughs> there's gonna be a Spider-Man three. But they, but they did say Miles is the Spider-Man. Like they see that Miles going is forward, right? They're considering so the main Spider-Man. So I mean, there has to be a Spider-Man three. Obviously, you could have guessed that without them saying it. Where do we yeah. see Miles in that journey? Quickly. Um, I think he'll be, you know, New York's main Spider-Man now. Um, but I think. One green meanie is going to be coming along that uh, has to bring Peter out of his quote unquote retirement. All right. So does that mean there's going to be no Spider Verse at all? I don't think they do Spider Verse in these games. I do you see a Spider Verse? There's no way. Spider -Man Insomniac 3? has been all about doing their own thing and as well keeping it very grounded. As much you know, I know they have the Spider Bot mission and there's a whole Spider Verse thing, but that's even still just like a fun nod more than it is like this is going to have huge ramifications in our story. You yeah, know? but. Sydney Moon, four, five, six. Where does it go? 
is it grounded the whole time? You that's know what I mean? that's like, a good question. I want it to be grounded because yeah. I, I, whenever it gets too expansive, I kind of lose interest a little bit. Yeah, mm-hmm. I like the grounded superhero yeah, yeah. take, um, but it feels because like they're giving us too many nods. I, I, to that. Insomniac has also done a really good job too. There's been so many opportunities where they could have like, oh, and here's Iron Man yeah, for a that's quick true. little cameo. Yeah. Or he, I mean, I was honestly yeah. even surprised that there wasn't a post credit scene with Wolverine. I thought yeah. you know, with that being the next. Being insomniac title, maybe I was do some sort of teasing. There, like teasing. Um, but honestly, I appreciate that they want to make sure these Spider-Man games are just about Spider-Man and his world, and I guess their and, world. But in the that's case why of this I game. see Spider-Man and Miles, and I, I think if they go three, that may be the end for these games. And I could see that. They I could do see like that. These side games but that I, are completely different feels. I and just I just find it crazy if they were to introduce Silk because then that would mean that my theory would be wrong about her not being playable in the third game. Yeah. Um, because if they want Spider Man three to be the end, it would be kind of crazy to to introduce this Spider Person, and then not do a whole ton with her because now when when once they bring Silk into play in Spider Man three. The huge mainstream audience is now going to become familiarized with the character. That's true. And they're going to want more, you know? Yeah. And so, and, and I'm sure PlayStation wants Insomniac to be making Spider Man games forever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to five million copies in like a weekend is like PlayStation's like, yeah, uh, uh, I want we'll, you guys we'll to make 10 of 72 yeah. Spider Man games yeah. now. <laughs> you know? I agree with you. I agree with you there. Uh, but Miles isn't the only one um, that we do we kind of it leaves an opening for possible futures we see peter retires maybe he'll come back who knows but then we also see norman osborne oh, um still under grief of harry's situation being in a coma mm-hmm. goes in and he's now asking questions about spider-man to and it's like dude yeah, yeah. <laughs> i was just like He's wearing the green the green jacket. Oh, he was wearing green the like G-Serum. the whole game. They were not being yeah. subtle with it at all, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like yeah, that the first post credit scene got me way more hyped than the second one, honestly. Yeah. That the partnership now between the two ex friends now is it enemies. Be partnership? I think they're so. Gonna work together. I mean, they're gonna I work think, together. I don't think they it's are. it's Otto Otto still carries a hatred for Spider Man. Or at least he still has like some sort of like some he sort of um, Norman though. More. But, but see that he hates the thing. Norman more. But I he mean, he no, they're gonna they're gonna work together in this next game. And and so a lot of people were like, oh, are they gonna do Superior Spider Man? First of all, not a big fan of that storyline. Yeah. Really hope they no, don't, don't do Superior. Do it, don't. But do they? But have, yeah. Um, amongst the two, Otto is the one who's smarter. Yes. And Norman is the one with the tech and yeah. the money. The money. Norman that would be, hires uh, Doc Ock. Norman would be the yeah. one, I'd assume, who becomes the Green Goblin. And I think to obviously to, to put the Insomniac spin on it while still following some things from the comics, I think they do superior, but it's Otto taking over Norman's mind. As the green no, goblin. No, I kind of want Insomniac to do something totally different there because I do want Green Goblin to appear like like you said off the top. Yeah. Green Goblin is definitely uh Spider-Man's yeah. rival. Yeah. Like he's, the, he's his the arch joker nemesis. Batman, right? yeah, yeah, exactly. No. So they have to do Green Goblin, but I do want to see Doc Ock kind of take a step back where maybe he's not too much of the villain at this point. Maybe it starts off like that, but then he kind of is just like you know what? Like, no. Like, what you're doing is There's going to be a red herring. I think there will for there sure be to. a moment of, of Otto having clarity and, and realizing the mistakes that he made. Kind of similar to what we saw with yeah. Mr. Negative and Spider-Man 2. Um, like, again, maybe the, obviously it's outlandish. The It's a the really Toby wild Maguire, theory to talk, talk about the superior that, thing. That, that has me in my yes, head. You yes. know, like, I, I see kind of like that kind of ending for Doc Ock where yes. it's like he may sacrifice himself for the greater I, good. I can see that as well. I mean, especially because of how much of a friendship was there in the first game between Otto and Peter. I think there could be a moment of like, what I'm doing here is wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, but they will be working together for sure. Yeah. Um, and they're definitely <laughs> setting up the Green Goblin. And I'm re- I'm really excited for it. My assumption is he's going to want to use this G serum. Um, I wonder what the G stands for. Um, <laughs> yeah, green or goblin. Um, yeah. yeah, so he's going to try and use that on his son. His son, Harry, will inevitably die. Um, and this is going to make him crazy. And then he's going to use this G serum on himself and become the Green Goblin. I only hope... For as much as I like the Ultimate Comics, that they go with 616, 
Green Goblin. Yeah, they with have a glider to. and pumpkin bombs. Pumpkin. They have to bring the pumpkin. I bombs. don't want. I don't want Hulk Green Goblin like they did in yeah. the Ultimate Comics. You know, that's the only thing I'm asking for here in Somnia. Just hear him. Just hear Just him. Just hear me. <laughs> Nick, uh, what are you hoping for with the this Norman and Doc Ock? Where do you see this going? I think it's too straightforward what you're saying. I so then what do you think that meeting is all about? Just think about it. He's wearing the green jacket. All this, like, it's it's basically telling us this is what's going to happen. Okay. And I feel like they're, they might go a different direction. I don't know what that is, but I'm, I'm, I'm feeling like they're trying to set up like Norman as Green Goblin, yeah. but there's going to be something else. But then how can what do you, they, what do you who think, would be Green I Goblin? I don't know. Also, what do you think, Her- or sorry, what do you think Otto is writing here when he says he's writing the final chapter, right? Because I think in yeah. a way it's also speaking to the audience that yeah. Spider-Man 3 could be like the end, right? Yeah. Um, but I also think that this could be like he's etched a plan to take down Spider-Man once and for all. And now he's got this guy who he hates so much at his doorstep yeah. pleading for his help. You know, and now Otto, even though losing control of his body, is in control of his situation and can finally be like, you follow my rules now, Norman. Hey, guess what? We don't know what's happening in Spider-Man 3 because Spider-Man 3 is not here. This was Spider-Man 2 <laughs> and we got to play it through with all of you. Thank you so much for listening to the series. Caboose, yes. thank you so much for coming back and nerding out. Thank this you probably for is me. our longest episode yes. just because. I'm so but sorry. I feel like we went over <laughs> so much good stuff. I mean, the last yeah. like hour of the game is yeah, it's intense. Packed. It is intense. Packed. Yeah. It is intense. But thank you so much. Um, where can we find you? Yeah, uh, youtube.com slash caboose if you want to keep up with some superhero games. I mean, we're in like a renaissance right now. Suicide Squad's on the way, but also like we got a Captain America Black Panther game coming, a Black Wolverine. Panther open world game coming, Wolverine from yeah, Insomniac. Um, we got an Iron Man game coming. There's just so much. There's yep. so much. Um, so I'm going to make sure I'll keep you guys locked on all the superhero gaming related things, but also Twitter and Instagram at Caboose EK. I'm also on Twitch. I stream sometimes if you want to see some, uh, some Mortal Kombat, you know, I stream some tournaments. You can follow me on twitch.tv slash Caboose. All right. Well, thank you so much, Nick. Any final I thoughts? Have nothing to add. It was just an incredible game. It was an incredible game. Masterpiece. Uh, masterpiece. How many thwips? I would do... Five flips out of five. <laughs> thank you so much. I've been wanting to put that in this episode and you got it for me. But thank you. Five flips to you for tuning in. Uh, we appreciate it all the time. If you want to check out more on what we're doing here on Autosave, Autosave Pod on all of our socials and in our Discord, we're there too. Maybe you could give suggestions on the next game we cover right here on Autosave. Autosave is produced and hosted by Nick Andrade and myself, Camille Selzer Hadaway. The show is also produced by Dylan Wilson. Gameplay and additional elements provided by Chris Dyser. Executive producer, Clayton Hansler. You can follow the show at Autosave Podcast on Twitter and Autosave Pod on Instagram, YouTube, and Twitch. You can subscribe to the show wherever you're listening to it right now. And if it happens to be Apple Podcasts, kindly leave us a rating and a review, but only if it's good. Autosave is a Soda original hosted on the Soda Podcast Network. Autosave. So good, man. (laughs) So good. So good. (laughs) 